Maxie. I've been thinking. Should we do season three on the Dr. Joe show? You sure? You sure it's a good idea? I'm Joe, and today we bring you the conclusion of our J.C. Newman Cigar Company brand history. Thus far, we brought the brand up to the cusp of the millennium, when in 1995 they celebrated their 100th anniversary. And to do so, they released what is one of their most famous cigar lines up to date, Diamond Crown. And the cigar truly did live up to its name. We handed it out a stellar 9.5 overall rating. One, may I add, that I do not hand out lightly. If you've watched many of the past episodes, you'll realize our rating system is a little bit different, and a 9.5 is just, well, stellar. <laughs> the cigar, albeit mild, is not lacking in the flavor department whatsoever, and we also found that they age quite well. For more on that, do watch our previous episode, but today, we are bringing J.C. Newman into the 21st century, and to do so, we are smoking another Diamond Crown. But this time, we're smoking the Diamond Crown Maximus. Here I hold the Diamond Crown Maximus Pyramid Number no. 3 with its special Ecuadorian grown El Bajo sun grown wrapper produced by none other than the Oliva family. So here we have a cigar that joins together forces of J.C. Newman, the Fuentes, and the Olivas. Now I want to pause one minute and make it perfectly clear because this can be a little confusing that we are talking about Oliva Tobacco Company, not Oliva Cigar Company. The Oliva Cigars you smoke, Series O, Series G, Series V, Milanio, Nub, well, Nub is another story, but we'll get to that. That is a different family than the Oliva Tobacco Company, which is the one that is often mentioned when I talk about Fuente, or uh, this brand here, J.C. Newman, or even when I talked about the uh, L'Atelier, uh, in a, a few episodes ago, produced by Le Talier Company, uh, it, associated with Pete Johnson. That wrapper was produced by Oliva Tobacco Company. So these are two different entities. Uh, anyway, with that all cleared up, let's get back to our cigar. We're smoking the Pyramid Number no. 3, the Maximus Pyramid Number no. 3 by J.C. Newman. This cigar is produced by Fuente. It is a 50 ring gauge by 6 and 3 8 quarter inches and a perfect pyramid, may I add. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Just a beautiful wrapper. Beautiful wrapper. Mm. Has a nice, sharp, semi-sour smell with a faint sweetness behind it. Mm. The foot is actually rather cocoa-y. Very, very nice. Has a bit of a papery yet oily feel. Uh, some very thick veins running throughout it. This is a very heavy-duty wrapper. The wrapper comes from the corona leaves of the tobacco plant, so this is a heavy-duty, sun-grown wrapper getting the full force of the sun. The cigar is uh, 
almost a Maduro color, really. Uh, it's got a slight reddish-brown tint here and there. It's a little bit mottled. It's not a perfect shade throughout, but it's a gorgeous-looking cigar and well-dressed with its super elegant band. Um, one of the most decorative bands in the entire industry, if you ask me. We did a um, V-cut on our Cuesta Ray pyramid, so I'm going to put a nice little... Can always do a little more. Nice little straight cut on this guy. There we go. Mm. Mm. Very, very nice. Deep, meaty flavors. Tiny bit of a sour note. Hints of cocoa. A little barney touch of dried fruits, a little bit of pepper coming in. Very, very, very little. No spice, really. Smooth. It has that same similar undertone as the standard diamond crown of that that aged cheese kind of flavor. It's just... but but a little more sour with a bit of a sour note. Very enticing and, and very... Very complex. Even with your tongue not against the filler, when you're drawing in the cold air and it's just kind of hitting your palate, you can sense all this flavor. There's a lot of flavor in the pre-draw. Hmm. Very nice. Very nice pre-draw. The draw feels really good. Uh, tiny bit of resistance, as I said. But, you know, when you cut a pyramid, it tapers off and you can always cut off a little more, but I think we're good here. I'm out of long matches, can you believe that? So today, we're gonna light up using the Zykar Windproof Lighter. I, I love this lighter. I have the carbon fiber model. Uh, I'm a carbon fiber guy, freak. I, I love carbon fiber products. I think they're just really cool, especially when they're mixed with other stuff like this lighter. It's um, just a nice, nice mirror finished metal with carbon fiber inlaid panels. Beautiful. It's got your little flame adjust here. Nice size flame. So. I'm going to toast this baby. Hold on, hold on. Mmm. Mmm. Very nutty, meaty. Very nice. I like that. Lots of flavor. Lots of flavor. A little bit of coffee. It's meaty. It's nutty. It's deep. It's got this real heavy underlying earthiness to it. Mm. Ooh, wow. A little more. Like hints of, I swear to God, hints of. <laughs> I'm going to say things and people are going to laugh, but this has kind of an essence of blue cheese. <laughs> the other one was Gouda, now it's blue cheese, but I'm telling you, on the tip of the tongue, take this smoke in and just let it kind of whirl around and you'll get that. When I'm talking about this sharp, salty, tangy flavor. Delicious. Mmm. Nice cigar thus far. But, we must move on. Let us get into our J.C. Newman Brand History Conclusion. The aromatic annual called Tobacco. In 2003, the Diamond Crown Maximus, the cigar we're smoking now, was born. Story goes that the Diamond Crown itself was extremely popular, but there was a call for a stronger version of the cigar. People love the blend, they love the whole story behind it, they just embraced the cigar. It really helped J.C. Newman barrel through the end of the cigar boom. But stronger cigars were the popular thing, 2003. And Jason Newman decided, 
well, Stanford Newman and Billy and Eric Newman, but J.C. Company decided, let's make a stronger version of this cigar. So together, with Fuente, as usual, as uh, all their cigars are blended by Fuente, and this time with the Oliva family, Oliva Tobacco Company, they came up with the Diamond Crown Maximus, using this very special Ecuadorian sun-grown El Bajo wrapper. Wonderful, wonderful, hearty, thick, textured wrapper that just has a dynamite aroma and a really unique flavor. In 2005, J.C. Newman Cigar Company celebrated its 110th anniversary, and to do so, they came out with special versions of Diamond Crown, Cuesta Ray, and La Unica, the very famous bundle cigar that J.C. Newman and Carlos Fuente came up with. Now, these cigars were rolled into a special format, a small perfecto, the same shape as J.C. Newman himself rolled for his first order of 500 cigars when he was first starting his company back in 1895. So, a very fitting tribute, very rare to see any of these around today, um, but nonetheless, we still have the blends. Same blend, just a different Fatola. In 2006, after working for the company his father started for over 70 years, Stanford Newman passed away while working at the factory. He was 90 years old. Now that's a legend. And I just have to say right here that <laughs> it makes me wonder, you know, when I'm reading this history and I'm doing my research and I'm sitting here and I got these cameras and lights all around me and I'm smoking this cigar and I'm saying to myself, I hope they find me like that, you know, doing something I love, doing something that I hope in some way makes a difference, you know, here's a man who brought us all these wonderful cigars, these cigars that I'm smoking right now and enjoying, that millions of people are enjoying, the man who brought Cameroon to America, you know, that's a life well spent. I always find that when you read something like that. If he just passed away, he passed away fine. But he passed away at the factory, working at the factory at the age of 90. Here's a man who obviously loved what he was doing. He didn't have to be there. He doesn't have to be there at 90 years old. You know, he made his money. But that's the cigar industry for you. You look around and you see these guys. You see people like Jose Padron. You see people like Carlos Fuente. They don't have to do what they're doing anymore. But for them, it's not about that. It's a passion. They want to be doing what they're doing. They love being in the tobacco fields and because they have to. You have to understand that. You know, it's, again, the story of the passion that runs through this industry. It, it grabs me. It enthralls me. And I see it every time. I look into these brand histories and, and the way these companies produce their cigars. And uh, it's, just, it's just amazing, you know. You look back at our Hoya de Nicaragua episode and you see a story of passion and struggle. And in every episode, Fuente, Padron, it's always about that. You know, you can't make it in this industry if you don't have that passion. People will know. And the cigars won't be that good. You know, you'll be around for a while and then you won't. You know, but the companies like this, the people who really love what they do, they'll be around forever. So, all that being said, to honor his 90th birthday, a special version of the Diamond Crown Maximus was released. Stanford's 90th. Talk about a rare cigar, I've never personally even seen one of these things. I've seen the Stanford's 90th format, the Tola, that they sell, uh, uh, Cuesta Ray, but uh, Diamond Crown Maximus, Stanford's 90th, I haven't seen one. Rare cigar, rare cigar. Probably only came out for that time. I'm not even sure if they still make it anymore, but um, you know, just a cigar to honor a great man. So far, so good. I'm really enjoying this cigar. Like I mentioned earlier, the burn is a little funny, uh, funny, just requires a little attention. No touch-ups or anything like that, but just, you know, a little care and concern. It's a very thick wrapper, and if it's not pressed tight to the bunching of the filler, it'll burn funny. 
it'll do things. So you just got to watch that. Other than that, it's great. The ash seems a little loose, um, falls off rather easily. I'm thinking that this is some very hearty, thick filler, so there's not a ton of it which would, you know, uh, bind the ash together as it burns. Falls off pretty easily, but we're talking aesthetics here. We're just talking construction and, and how the cigar behaves to being smoked. Flavor-wise, the cigar is great. I'm getting a little bit of spice now picking up at the beginning of the second third. More salt, more flavor. The salt really brings out everything else. The cigar has a really nice underlying oakiness to it right now, and it's making me think, depending on what kind of guy you are, here's a cigar that could go great with a nice aged scotch, or if you really want to pronounce the flavors of this cigar, which I recommend since it is such a flavorful cigar with beautiful nuances and complexities to it, a martini or something with vodka. Straight vodka really washes the palate, you know? So it's a great drink. People often neglect, you know, a lot of people like whiskey, scotch, bourbon. These are great drinks to have with cigars. But if you're in the mood to really tune into the cigar more, rather than, you know, just to pair the flavors, to amplify the flavors of the cigar, start thinking about vodka drinks. Vodka and tonic, even. No. If you don't drink, seltzer is fine, water is fine. I find even Diet Coke seems to pronounce the flavors of a cigar, you know? There's no real sugar in it. Maybe it's the bubbles, the fizz, the carbon. Maybe it's the, you know, the false sweetness that kind of lets you taste more of the salty flavors of a cigar. Often, I'll drink Diet Coke if I'm smoking a cigar solo or, or whatever, meaning not doing a review. When I'm doing a review, I tend not to drink or eat anything uh, for a while. I'll have some water maybe if I'm really thirsty from talking, but I try to keep it neutral. Uh, but these are my recommendations as far as this cigar goes in terms of pairing. So a nice first third, a little bit of pepper and spice picking up at the very end, a little more salt which amplifies the flavors, meatiness, very faint notes of cocoa and a little coffee, and an overall really nice, you know, it's funny, you have this oakiness on the underside and you have this sharp, twangy, sourish note at the top. It just goes very good with everything. Wonderful tasting cigar. So with that being said, let's get into the rest of our J.C. Newman brand history. Fuente is responsible for the production of J.C. Newman's premium and super premium cigars, Quest Array, Diamond Crown, Diamond Crown Maximus, Julius Caesar, etc. However, J.C. Newman still produces over 80,000 cigars a day at the historic 1910 El Relo factory in Tampa City, uh, Tampa, Florida, Ybor City. They're also partnered with factories in Honduras, which are responsible for the production of the Don Jose line, and factories in Nicaragua, which produce the Quorum and Alcazar brands. These are basically high-end bundle cigar brands. J.C. Newman is also partnered with Fuente under Newman and Fuente Premium Cigars LTD as the official distributor for Arturo Fuente Cigars Fuente Fuente Opus X cigars, and the Monticino cigar line. So both companies really work hand in hand, one making cigars for the other, and one distributing cigars for the other. It's a great partnership. And through that partnership, the Newmans have access to tobacco from the Olivas, as the Fuentes do, and some wonderful cigars are created and distributed around the world. In 2001, Newman and Fuente joined forces once again to establish the CFCF, the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation. Many of you know what this is through the extravagant, wonderful products that Fuente and Newman under this company combined make, including items such as the once a year Opus Fuente Fuente charity box a box full of coffins of single cigars of special Opus X shapes. They make all sorts of great products. But why? Well, it's not just because they want to show off and make all these shapes. Every dime spent on products such as those goes to charity. 
The Cigar Family Charitable Foundation is responsible for providing millions and millions of dollars in aid to areas in need around the Dominican Republic, building schools, health clinics, and other facilities, even clean drinking water. If you decide to go out and buy something like this charity box, it will cost you over $1,000. However, every single penny of that, and not a penny less, goes to charity. It's not like, well, Fuente is going to take this and the dealer is going to take that. No. This is a whole process that's set up uh, and cigar shops who get these sell them for Fuente and Newman to make money for charity. There is no profit involved. It's a completely non-profit operation. What more can you do? What more can you ask for, you know? Again, just great people. So here we are, second third of our Diamond Crown Maximus Pyramid number three. I'm just gonna undo this band now. And uh, you know, honestly, funny thing about reviews is you know, I get real close to the band and I would have taken it off a long time ago, but ah, for pictures' sake, you leave it on. Anyway, there's our cigar, one third left. And right now, it's starting to get very almondy. Some more naturally sweet type notes coming through, mostly almond, little hints of vanilla, kind of like the standard Diamond Crown, but it's much more earthy. As you can see from the photos, the wrapper is, is just unleashing a torrent of oil. It's just shiny, dark. Um, smoke is still relatively cool. The burn, a little wonky. Again, I had to really kind of coax the cigar, be a little gentle with it, slow down with the draw here and there. Uh, but I didn't need to apply any touch-ups. Again, from the pictures, you can see at one point that there's some major carbonization going on uh, toward the foot. And what that is, is again, the wrapper is very thick and it's not pressed hard, firm against the filler. And it starts to burn, but not burn, you know? Um, however, just a little time and a little patience and the cigar is uh, just working beautifully, drawing beautifully, producing a really just very faint gray, almost white ash. Nice ashes, you know, I, the last ash I came off was a nice inch long, so good construction. Being that the cigar is shorter now, I'm starting to get more volume, which I'm liking. I like to get big plumes of smoke. I like to get that easily. I have to work for it a little bit with this cigar. But, you know, all in all, again, great flavor makes up for it. Cigar is getting much more coffee-esque right now. It's drying the palate out a little bit, but again, I'm not really drinking much. Um, more coffee, espresso notes, almond notes, a lot of almond notes. Earthy, salt has subsided a lot. Spice that seemed to be kicking in at the beginning of the second third isn't there. Just a couple of hints and that's it. In tying it all together here, we'll just look at J.C. Newman as it is at the present moment. J.C. Newman Cigars, although it is an American company and they are the largest, oldest, family-owned American cigar company in the U.S. today, J.C. Newman Cigars are produced, uh, distributed to more than 80 countries around the world today. Um, it's an amazing outfit, and they really do represent the big business face of the cigar industry. And that's not a bad thing. The cigar industry needs that. We need companies like J.C. Newman. Think of all the wonderful things they've managed to do, the wonderful cigars they've managed to make by partnering with people like the Fuentes and the Olivas and creating charitable foundations and creating wonderful blends and super high-end cigars, humidors, the biggest humidor distributor in the United States with Craftsman's Bench and high-end humidors, Diamond Crown humidors, just wonderful stuff, cigar accessories. And if you're really interested in them and you liked this series, and I hope you did, but you want to learn more about J.C. Newman Cigar Company, I recommend picking up a copy of Stanford Newman's autobiography, Cigar Family, A Hundred Year Journey in the Cigar Industry. Wonderful book 
Great reading if you're a cigar guy. Nothing like sitting back with a drink and a cigar and, and a good book. Sometimes I watch movies, sometimes I play video games, but most of the time I read. I love to read while smoking cigars. I like to read the classics. Um, and I love to read books about cigars while I'm smoking cigars. This is one I recommend. Um, and if you're ever in Florida, you can visit a small museum at the family's original factory that, it, you know, it's still working, it's still in production, but there's a small one or two room museum there, the historic 1910 El Relo factory in Tampa City, Florida, in Ybor City. If you're a cigar guy, you have to go visit Tampa Sweethearts, see Arturo Fuente Jr., go over to the El Relo factory, see the historic building, take some pictures, go inside, check out the J.C. Newman Museum. Wonderful stuff. With all of that being said, I want to say good night to J.C. Newman Cigar Company. Thank you so much for being on our show. Um, I terrifically enjoyed some of the cigars that we smoked along the way. Some were good, some were great, and others were just downright fantastic. So here's a company that makes all kinds of cigars for all kinds of people. And if you're a cigar smoker and you're looking for something new that you haven't tried yet, step away from the modern and the uh, stuff that's coming out these days, which is all great stuff, you know, the trending stuff. And step back into tradition and try a cigar or two by J.C. Newman. Highly recommend it. Uh, and you may be surprised with what you find. Alright folks, our final rating. There's our Diamond Crown Maximus, all smoked up. Appearance, a one. Beautiful cigar. Looks as if it's expertly constructed. A perfect pyramid shape coming to a sharp point. Beautiful, heavy duty wrapper. Nice color, nice texture. Oils coming through. Wonderful looking cigar overall. Burn, construction, and draw. Here is where our super premium cigar got a bit of a beat down. 0.75 on all three. The burn was a bit wonky and although I didn't need to really touch it up, it did cause me to worry. Draw could have been better. It was a little bit tight. Uh, I even did at one point nip a little bit more off the end, try to open it up, but I just wasn't getting the smoke I wanted until later further down the cigar. So therefore, overall construction, a .75. It's a shame because it was a beautiful looking pyramid. Pre-draw flavor, a 1. Really nice pre-draw flavor. Very interesting, a lot of different notes. It definitely made me feel this was going to be a complex cigar. Uh, and even if not so much later on, definitely a flavorful cigar. And it was. Overall flavor, a 1.75. Excellent. Great change-ups. Great deepening of all the notes, great pronunciation of all the notes, a lot of little hints, bells and whistles at the top and bottom. Therefore, overall flavor, a 1.75. There's your high score. Really, really, really nice flavor. Deep, oaky flavors, coffee flavors, cocoa flavors, a beautiful sour type citrus tangy note at the tip that started in the beginning of the cigar, faded out, and then came back toward the end. Aroma, a .75. You know, definitely above average. Some nice floral notes woven in there. Fairly woody, uh, but, you know, definitely not something that I was just, like, wowed by. So I didn't give it a 1. Balance did get a 1. Very well-balanced cigar. This cigar is not as strong as it looks. It's medium-bodied at best. Uh, especially with the level of smoke I was getting, it's medium bodied at best. I wish the smoke was a little creamier, a little denser, and definitely more volume. That was the fault of the draw and the burn. But overall, overall, the balance was great. Strength-wise, flavor-wise, excellent. A fairly complex cigar with bold flavors and a medium body. For the money, I expect a better burn and draw, but it's a cigar I will continue to visit again and again nonetheless. That's what I wrote because that's how I feel. And that is the end of this review, folks. <laughs>